It's late March 2018. Team Big Red have ventured out from their Pawanui base in pursuit of a broadbill swordfish, the gladiator of the sea. Luke, Tony, Campbell and myself have high expectations after previous successful adventures and this trip would not disappoint. We chucked through the night, arriving mid-morning to a new spot we wanted to investigate. After marking some bait on the Furuno, we dropped our first bait at 10.30am. And within one minute of hitting the bottom, we were tight. Keeping with tradition, first drop, we're on. Oh, After 25 minutes, we release a healthy swordfish, estimated at 100 kgs. With that early success, it was now my turn in the chair. Let the frustration begin. He is hustling this one. Lunch time, we hook a small swordfish that rushes to the surface Pulling the hooks just before the leader. Oh, God. Yeah. There's a charging pull to the boat. <laughs> 2 p.m. Another messy bite. With the same result. Hold him. We fish for a couple more hours and then head in for the evening. The following morning, we woke early, hoping for a change of luck. Eleven a.m. We're tight again, but I pulled him. That was the third fish we'd lost in the last twenty-four hours, but we knew there were fish down there. We just had to be patient. Oh well. <laughs> it's half past one and our eighth drop of the day when we finally get tied to one. Ooh. And this fish means business. Peeling 18 kgs of drag off the Shimano reel with ease. Did you see him? Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> oh, he's humming. Woo! I think we're tight. <laughs>
push fairly aggressively. So as soon as they have taken their first run, we pump up the drag. We fish 60 kilo main line on the Shimano 80 wides and we have about 20 kilos of drag at sunset. On this occasion, we were fishing 80 pound cheer rod and about 30 minutes into the fight, we had a solid 20 kilos of drag on the fish. Everything seemed to be going well, but then, disaster. The chair broke. We literally pulled the screws right out of the base and the whole thing fell to the deck. I was about to find out that using a chair rod and a stand-up harness has a special name. For reasons that would quickly become clear, it is known as riding the Harley. How the fuck does this work? It doesn't. <laughs> Campbell and Luke quickly got to work repairing the chair with the tools and supplies we had on board. Tony maneuvered the boat trying to make things easier, but nothing about it was easy. The advantage was now in the sword's favour. Yeah, we're good fam. After about half an hour, I was able to return to the chair to try and make up some lost ground. I just aged a couple of years. <laughs> that proper fuck. <laughs> fuck, I hope that doesn't pull out again. Back in the chair, I was able to put some pressure on the fish. But I ended up back where we started, with a broken chair on the deck. about the boys got me set up on a chair chili bin combo and we did our best to apply some more pressure. After about two and a half hours we put the gaffs into a solid swordfish. We have a rum, then after some discussion whether we should head home or keep fishing, we decide to swap the reel onto a stand-up rod and have another drop. What happens next has to be the most intense sword fishing bite we have had to date and would have to be up there with some of the best sword fishing anyone has been lucky enough to experience. Oh, that's a bite there. Look at that. Oh, no, he's just eating that. Oh, he's... Oh, shit, we just got bitty. Only minutes into the drop, while trying to take a photo of my fish, we get another bite. Tony teases the fish up. Campbell jumps on the rod, and we are tight again.
After a quick 15 minute fight, we release an estimated 80 kilo swordfish. Feed is stacked up on the sounder. We've got plenty of daylight left to try again. We repeat the process, bomb a bait, and instantly get another bite. Look at our shit, so oh, really? oh, <laughs> That was a sick never wait, you see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this drop literally hit the bottom and we're on. Literally, I'll be upstairs and came back. <laughs> 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 We've now caught three swordfish in a day. Four. After a 25 minute fight, we okay, set another up. swordfish free. Luke's second of the trip. Yes! From here on, it all turns into a blur of bites, swordfish, and rum. Get a bait ready! He's ready! <laughs> we catch this. This is cool. Is this better than three blues if you get all swords? I'd say. Right up there. I was still hurting from the battle earlier, but the adrenaline and rum made me forget all about the pain, so I jumped at the opportunity to wind in another. How neat was that little Yeah. Yeah. This is your lockout turn around and have a look at Still didn't get a photo. Turned out too many opportunities. Swordfish of the day. Hey, this is like a 40 kilo pup. At 
this stage the sun had just set and the bait word marking had come up to 200 meters. So we quickly dropped another bait. Who's on it? Tony! You! Huh? Yeah, get on that <laughs> And this time it was Tony's turn for what would turn out to be his yeah, first ever swordfish. <laughs> but after a glamour day, the conditions now appear to be a little unstable. Here we go. You say you never got a sword? Never, mate. Oh, you leaded my first. Well, I've uh, <laughs> got <laughs> Pulling the hooks. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. Ending an afternoon of fishing we would never forget. Holy shit! <laughs> that afternoon was unbelievable sword fishing and something I hope I am lucky enough to experience again. It's situations like these that you look back and realise how important it is to learn to catch these fish quick, take advantage of bite times and fight them without fear of losing them. But most importantly, drink lots of rum. Wow. Um, he wasn't very happy at you though. No, no. no. He was really pissed off that whole situation. <laughs> <laughs>